All right, we've come down the lakefront this morning and what I want to do is head down and we're going to do some example shots and I'm going to explain the entire workflow for focusing your camera to make sure that you're getting an image that's sharp from front to back. Let's go take a look. All right, so you're at location, you've got a rough composition. This is the point obviously where you start to think about focusing the lens. Now, there's two key factors that you need to consider. Firstly, the proximity to the foreground matter. If you're ultra close to that foreground, it's gonna mean you need to focus at a different point than if you're further away. I'm gonna talk about that more shortly. The other factor though is your f-stop, your aperture, the depth of field. That heavily ties into where you focus and determines if the image is sharp all the way through. And I do have a video on f-stop and aperture. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend you check that out. The next thing now though is just that initial point of focus so let me run through a very common scenario right here using these rocks in the foreground all right so here we have a classic landscape photography composition some foreground matter a leading line and then main subject matter into the background so where do we focus if you want to walk away from this video with a very quick and short answer 90 percent of the time you're going to focus one third of the way into your scene what does one third look like do we need to get the tape measure out no you don't have to be that critical. One third is basically not gonna be right in your foreground and not far off into the distance. It's just gonna be a little stone's throw out in front of you. When you focus there, your f-stop, depending on the aperture you're using, will then extend towards you and away from you, your depth of field. That's how it works. It's going towards you and away. If we focus right on that immediate foreground, you're not gonna get the coverage off in those mountains. If we focus on the mountains in the distance, we're not gonna get sharp in the front. By going a third of the way into the scene, we guarantee that we're gonna get that coverage all the way through. But this is where the f-stop really comes into play. All right, so we've set up and got a rough composition here. Rocks in the front, water in the mid-ground, mountains in the back. Let's do the three examples. First of all, we're gonna focus right on that immediate foreground. Now, when I do that, I've moved that focus box down. I've focused, I'm gonna take the image. If we focus up on those mountains, take the image, you can see the same result. Now we're soft in the foreground. If I move that focus box down into that mid-ground area, just out on that point where the rocks are meeting the edge of the lake, the water, we focus there. Now look at that sharp all the way through. But if the f-stop isn't narrow, if we're too wide on our aperture there, we're not going to get that coverage. And this is where the f-stop really comes into play with where you're focusing. So you need to be using a narrow aperture in a scenario like this. The best question to ask yourself is, do I have something near to me as well as something far away? If that's the case, like what we've got here, then you wanna close that f-stop down. F11, f16, etc. And then focus one third of the way in, and 99% of the time, that's gonna get the result for you. Scenario number two, similar to the last one, foreground, midground, background with the wide angle, however, this time, you're getting ultra close to that foreground, which is something that I like to do a lot in my photography. Ultra close to the foreground to show those details and really get a strong sense of depth. When you do this though, focusing a third of the way into the scene is going to render that foreground soft. And obviously again, if you focus on the foreground, the background is going to be soft. If you determine that you want to get ultra close, this is where you need to focus stack. Focus stacking is where we're shooting multiple frames at different focus points. I cover that in a different video. I recommend you check that out. But in this scenario, you will definitely need to focus stack and the whole one third of the way in rule won't apply when you really want to get close and emphasize that foreground. All right, example number three, telephoto lenses, photographing scenes where all the subject matter is far off in the distance. So in this scenario, we don't have anything near to us. Everything's far away. Don't worry, this one's super easy. It almost doesn't matter where you focus or what the f-stop is because when everything's far off in the distance there, the lens essentially renders the scene as being flat. And even if there is a, a distance and separation between the far off distant trees and peaks to the lens, it's all flat. So I'll take some examples here and you'll see exactly what I mean. You can take an image with a narrow f-stop and then we can take one with a wide f-stop. When we zoom in, you'll see that it's sharp all the way through. Everything here is off at the infinity point just going to be rendered flat to the lens. So in this scenario, 
I just generally go straight to an f-stop that's going to be best for the lens. So every lens has an optical aperture to shoot with. Generally it's going to be f7, 8, 9, somewhere around there. And then just focus straight on the main subject matter itself. Focus modes. Which focus mode do you need to use? Auto, continuous, manual? Personally, I leave it on the single focus mode 99% of the time. This way I can just move that box around to where I need it to be. I half press my shutter or maybe you use back button focusing, totally up to you. And then I know that that's where I'm gonna be set. I can even half press and then recompose. And again, I know that I've locked in on that specific point. On a tripod, manual focus is actually quite handy. You can flick the lens to manual, move that little box around to where you wanna focus on and then tap the magnifying glass to zoom in adjust your focus and then you know it's set. Set it on a third of the way in, you can leave it far away. Continuous focus, I would only use that if I was photographing wildlife or people and I wanted to pan along and track that subject matter. But when it comes to landscape photography, I don't really use continuous focus at all. For me, single focus is where it's at. I think it's just so much easier to be able to point, lock in on what you want to focus on, recompose, take the image. All right guys, I really hope that helped you out. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And like I said, just remember, a third of the way into the scene, most of the time that's gonna get you out of trouble. Anyway, thanks again, and I hope to see you in the next video.